Hello all. In the next set of tutorial, we will be finding out how to do image processing on FPGAs uh, and on Zinc chip in particular. So I'm not going into details of image processing. For that, you may refer to any standard textbook, maybe Digital Image Processing by Gonzalez, which is a good reference book. And uh, this is going to be a quite a long tutorial, so I am breaking it into many different parts. So this is the introduction to the image processing, basically the theory part. Now, as you know, images, they are nothing but uh, two dimensional arrays. Okay? They are like a matrix of two dimension. If they are grayscale, if they are color images, usually we will say they are three dimension. So in this two dimension, each each box here, it represents a pixel. If it is a grayscale, we usually have one byte <coughs> that are representing the intensity of that pixel. If it's a color image, each box will have three values representing the RGB values of that pixel. So broadly, we are classifying image processing into two. One is called the point processing. Other one is called the neighborhood processing. In point processing, you have an input image and you do some operation on that image and you get the output image. Now, the particular pixel value in the output image uh, depends on the particular pixel value on the input image. So you're basically doing some transformation operation on a particular input pixel and you get the corresponding output pixel. So just remember the value of the output pixel depends only upon the value of the input pixel at that corresponding position and what our transformation operation you are doing. For example, uh, we have the inversion operation. So we have already done this in detail how this is done. So when you are doing the inversion operation, the pixel value on the output image will be 255 minus the pixel value in the input image. So there are a lot of other uh, point processing also. For example, you have something called gray level mapping. Here what you do is you take an input pixel value and you add a bias to that pixel value. Now depending upon whether the bias is a positive number or a negative number, you will get a picture with uh, increased brightness or you may get a pixel or picture with the decreased brightness. So these are what we call as point processing. Now this is the general architecture we will follow when we design uh, a system for pixel processing. And we have already seen this architecture. We actually designed this IP for doing image processing. Um, inversion operation basically and we interface with the DMA controller. So in this architecture initially the image will be stored in the external DDR memory. How you get uh, the image to that external DDR depends upon what kind of interface you have. You may, you may use Ethernet, USB, PCI Express high speed interfaces or if you have very low speed interface like you what you can use that also which is we basically used in our previous tutorial. Now from that DDR, the image is streamed, the pixels are streamed to the image processing IP with the help of the DMA controller. So basically we'll have a driver here running on the processor who will configure the DMA controller here and it will basically send the image data from external DDR to the DMA controller and from there it is streamed to your IP. Now your IP will be processing the pixels depending upon what is the data width. For example, in our tutorial, the data width was 32. That means you can process four pixels in parallel and you will process it. But data width, you can make it 8, 16, 32, 64, whatever width you choose, uh, which may improve the performance, depends. And you process it using your IP. After you process it, you stream it back to the DMA controller and the DMA controller, it will send that process picture back to the DDR using the AXI4 interface. And finally, that entire processed image is in the DDR. You can send it to the external world 
through your interfaces or to a display controller to view it on a monitor. So in our previous tutorial, we used the UART interface to send it back to the computer and view it on the computer. Now the other kind of popular image processing technique is called the neighborhood processing. Now in neighborhood processing, what happens, the pixel value in your output image not only depends upon the pixel in the corresponding position in the input image, but also on the neighbors of that pixel. For example, if I am processing this pixel, the value of the corresponding pixel in the output depends on this pixel as well as his neighbors. Now, neighbors, we can have different kind of neighbors. So there are eight immediate neighbors you can see. There are eight of them. But in many cases, we have more neighbors. We can take uh, the pixels which are farther away from this pixel also. So here we have eight. And these are also neighbors. They are not immediate neighbors. So depends. So basically what you are doing is you will take your input image and you will be doing a 2D convolution with a smaller matrix called the kernel. So this is the math representation. This is basically a multiplication operation. This is your image and this is our so-called kernel. You are multiplying them together and you are adding them together to make things clearer let me show this picture so this is your input image which is a 2d matrix you will have a smaller matrix called a mask or a kernel whose size can be 3 by 3 5 by 5 3 by 5 different size depending upon what operation you are doing what you will do is you will multiply the values in the mask with the corresponding pixel in the image okay so here it is a 3 by 5 so you multiply this 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 okay and after that you add them together so basically it's the mac operation multiply and uh, accumulate operation and that multiplied and accumulated result will be the corresponding pixel in the output image okay so that's what we are doing here now again i am showing pictorially assume this is your picture this is the mask here i am taking a three by three so there will be some values here okay in practical case so you place the mask on the picture and multiply each corresponding values add them and you are actually getting the output pixel value for this pixel after that you move the mask by one pixel repeat the operation and you get the value for this pixel in the output image and you keep on doing it you keep on moving the mask now when you are doing this uh, you will notice uh, if you want to calculate the values of this pixel on the edges of the image you do not have eight neighbors for example the corner ones they have only three neighbors here and the other ones on the edges they have only five neighbors now how to solve this uh, issue again you can read in the book there are different ways of that you may assume a dummy row on the top on the left right and bottom edges also and this dummy rows and column they may have value zero or you may replicate the same values of the edges here also and you can do the calculation here that is one way of doing it another way is your output picture it will not have values corresponding to the pixels on the edges so in this case the resolution of the output pixel picture will be slightly less than the resolution of the input picture for example if you have 512 by 512 input image the output will be 510 by 510 because we are neglecting this row this row and these two corners so uh, row wise there will be a reduction of two pixel column wise there will be a reduction of two pixels so you will have five ton by five ton okay so that's how we usually solve the issue of the pixels on the edge now once you finish uh, this convolution for this particular row you will move the mask to the next row okay again you are not shifting by three pixels although it is a three by three you are shifting only by one pixel so keep that in mind and you repeat it until you finish convolution of the entire picture now 
when you design a hardware for doing this you cannot use pure streaming architecture here why because in this particular case the pixels you are processing they are not consecutive for example here these three pixels are consecutive but these three pixels they are not consecutive with these three pixels so when i am streaming data from my external media i'll be always streaming like uh, starting from here i will first stream this entire line then i stream this entire line so on and so forth so pure streaming we cannot use because i need only these three pixels these three I, the remaining i don't want then i want these three then i want these three so on and so forth so pure streaming based implementation is not possible so you will have to buffer the image inside your ip before you start uh, processing now it won't be practical to buffer the entire image inside your ip because uh, depending upon the image size how much memory you need to buffer it varies again 512 by 512 grayscale image you need around 262 kilobytes and uh, if you remember inside fpga we have something called the block rams the small memory blocks uh, which are like 36 kilobit in 7 series FPGA. And we have looked cup tables and flip flops. So you can make buffers or small memories using them, but the number of BRAMs are quite limited. If you check the particular FPGA we are using, there will be a few hundred VRAMs usually. And uh, if you use uh, lookup tables and flip flops to make this memory, which we call as the distributed RAM, it is going to use a lot of CLBs to do it. So you won't have much CLBs uh, left for implementing the remaining logic. So practically, we will never uh, buffer an entire picture inside the FPG unless the picture is really, really small. Okay? Otherwise, we won't buffer the entire picture. What we'll do is we'll buffer only a part of the image inside our IP which is necessary for doing the processing. So for example, if you are using this three by three kernel for processing, if I, if I buffer three lines of my image inside the FPGA, that is enough for me to start processing. So I, I buffer these three lines, then I use the kernel to do convolution and I can keep on moving the kernel until I finish this three lines after that i will need this fourth line which i can send from the external data to my ip so what we usually have is something called line buffers so line buffers are again small memories they are like rams uh, which are used for storing one line of the image inside the fpga now as i mentioned before for for this 512 by 512 3 by 3 kernel i need to buffer only three lines so basically i need only three line buffer and for three line buffer one line buffer will be 512 so i need only 1536 bytes okay about one and a half kilobytes now uh what is the size of a line buffer depends upon what is the width of the image basically the resolution basically the width actually so as i mentioned uh, the from ddr we will send three lines of data to my ip i'll process those three lines then i will send the next line then i will process so on and so forth now uh, now remember for convolution we might have to reuse the same line buffer multiple times what does it mean so in this case when i am doing convolution i am using these three lines next time i am going to use these three lines so this line i am using twice here for convolution as well as here for convolution and this third line if you see i need to use here first round of convolution then I need to use it again. Then after this, I will move my kernel down. Then again. So same line I need to use thrice. Okay. So for for better performance, it won't make sense to send the same line information again and again from external data to our IP. So using some intelligent multiplexing scheme, you can send one line only once and uh, somehow reuse it. So this is the architecture we'll be using. So this is the image uh, which is in the DDR initially and these are our line buffers. So we have three of them. 
and these are three multiplexes so you will see each multiplexer it is getting data from all three line buffers and using some control signal we can choose which line buffer is chosen as the output of the multiplexer now this line one line two line three they represent the first line second line and third line used for 2d convolution okay so they are fixed this is always line one this is line two this is line three now which line buffer will be used as line one which is used as line two or which is used as line three will be decided by these three multiplexes so initially first three lines of my image i will just store in these three line buffers straightforward so there is one to one mapping and i will do the convolution operation so once i finish the first convolution uh, the entire row i no longer need the first line buffer so i can replace the content of this line buffer with the fourth line okay so what i will do is i will send the fourth line and store it in the first line buffer now i will adjust my multiplexer in such a way that now this second line buffer will be chosen as line one the third one as line two and the first one as line three and i can do the convolution now sometimes it really doesn't matter what is the uh, first second third lines and in some cases it really matters the order the, so that's why we keep the multiplexer in such a way that it always properly chooses the correct lines uh, for the convolution operation now system architecture uh, what we will first do is for improving the overall system performance we'll add a fourth line buffer why we are doing it for example here i am sending first three uh, lines of data okay now i cannot send any more data because i don't have any more free line buffer so i will send first three lines then i will wait for the convolution to be over then i will send the fourth line here and while i am sending the fourth line the convolution operation uh, can't happen because there is no data for doing convolution so this is more like software operation you are sending data then you are doing convolution more like sequential but hardware of course we need to parallelize things to make it faster so what we can do is we can add a fourth line buffer i haven't shown the picture here and what we'll do is first we'll send these three line buffer data and uh, we'll start the convolution and while the convolution is in progress we will send the fourth line to the fourth line buffer and once this convolution is over we will use this this and the fourth line buffer for next convolution and parallelly i will send the fifth line of data to this first line buffer so here data transmission and data processing they happen in parallel okay which will uh, improve our overall system performance so that's what we will do first then finally when we connect everything together it more or less looks exactly same as our previous architecture but in this particular case we are going to use interrupt based processing so we will have an interrupt line coming from our ip to the ps and we will also have the corresponding interrupt service routine so what will happen is as usual we will store the picture initially in the ddr then we will you configure the dma controller to stream the first four lines to the ip to the four line buffers and uh, he'll be doing convolution operation here and once he finish one row of convolution he will send an intra to the processor and as soon as we get the intra our intra service routine it will send the next line of data to the ip and this operation keeps on happening until the entire image is processed so once one line of uh, convolution is over your ip will be streaming it to the ddr uh, through the dma controller okay so which is same mm -hmm. as before after convolution we can stream the data that will come to the dma controller which will send it back to the ddr through the stream interface here and through the xc4 interface here so that architecture remains same okay so in the next tutorial uh, we will actually start coding and we will see how to implement this IP code.